Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in this series called Moving Forward, preparing for the mission, what we're doing. We're getting ready to witness. We're getting unstuck. We're learning to listen and follow Jesus. And today it's this. We're learning to stay connected to Jesus through it all. He is the vine. We are the branches. So if you have your Bible, look up John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. Also, Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 37, and 1 Corinthians 1, verse 3 to 14. And you'll see how all this fits together about what it looks like to stay connected, what the blessings are, what Jesus is doing, what the Father is doing to help us to bear fruit, the stuff of life that really matters. So check it out. Okay, we're moving forward. And some of you are going, duh. I'm getting older by the moment. We're moving forward in time. You know, time's running out. That's the one thing you can't get back. Did you know that? Time. You can get money. You can get other things. But you can't get time. But we're moving forward in a different way. It's all about moving forward in the mission. This is such a key concept of what God has done. Jesus did it all, and now he sends us out with the mission of taking what he has done to a whole world. It's what life is all about. It's about the mission. It's about him. It's about sharing what he has done for us. So today, moving forward is this. It's moving forward. We need to stay connected. Key, key, key thing. First, we need to get unstuck. If we're stuck, we're no good. We're in the muck. It's fear, whatever it might be. We also need to be prepared for the mission. We got something to say. We understand how it goes. We need to prepare in the word. And we also need to listen and follow. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. We can't be doing our own thing. When we're doing our own thing, it's called manipulation. You know what manipulation is? Demonic. If he didn't say do it, and I'm doing it, I'm taking charge, I'm God, I'm going to be a pharaoh to somebody else trying to make things happen. And he doesn't call us to do that. He just says, follow me, come with me. I determine exact times and places for you. I'm going to set everything up. You just watch. Eyes to see, ears to hear. But the key is also we need to live each day where we're abiding in the vine. And that vine, of course, is Jesus. And here's why this is important. Because if we don't, if we don't abide in the vine, we won't bear any fruit. Zero. Our lives will be empty and unproductive in this life and in eternal life. When we get to the end, there's nothing to show for it, for the kingdom. And the king, with, with what he has, he calls us to bear fruit. He calls us to stay connected. That's how it works. And this is so important that Jesus talked about it as he's getting ready to go to the cross in the upper room with his disciples. He so wanted them to get it. And so in this conversation up in the upper room, John chapter 14, he says, you know, you're going to be doing the same works I have done, wait a second, even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. This is what your life is now going to be, doing the same thing I did while I was here on the earth. All the ministry, all the works, the things that I did, and even greater things. Then in John chapter 16, he says, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He'll, he'll put words in your mouth. He'll set you up. He'll give you power and strength and everything you need. He will be your helper and he will be your advocate. Yeah. Then in John chapter 17, he says, you know what? I'm praying for you and I'm going to be praying for you. Yeah. For my father to protect you from the evil one because the evil one's going to want to take you out. I'm going to pray for your protection. And not only that, I'm going to pray for your unity. Because without that, people won't know that what you have is real. That's how they'll know you're my disciples. It's in the way you love one another, in the way that you live together, the way that you are in oneness in me as I live in each one of you. 
But now in John chapter 15, Jesus stresses the importance of this, of staying connected. Now listen again to how he says it and what he says. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Who owns the garden? Who owns the world? Who owns everything? It's his. He's the gardener. Jesus says, I'm the vine. I'm the one who brings life. Everything is connected to me that gives life. And he says, the father who is a gardener, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. It's important for us to bear fruit. He says, the father is going to do this. If there's no fruit, I'm going to cut it off because it's just waste in space. It's dead. It doesn't belong. And if the father does that, we have no hope kind of thing. If God is against us, what's the reverse? Who can be for us? He says, while every branch, though, that bears fruit, he prunes so that it'll be even more fruitful. He doesn't want us to bear just fruit. He wants us to bear even more. And so he does some pruning on our life. See, have you ever noticed that sometimes when you're stepping up in your faith and I'm going to start doing some things and helping out and all of a sudden bad things start to happen or it seems like and it gets harder. Why is that? Well, sometimes the enemy is trying to say, stop it. But sometimes the father's pruning. He's trying to get things out of our life that really don't belong there and are getting in the way of living a productive, fruitful life that we can do even more in the kingdom and the fruit that comes from our connection to Jesus. He's, he cares so much about it. He says, I want to help you out so that your life is even more fruitful. Then he says this. He says, you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. You know, that's what a lot of people get stuck on. That's, am I saved? But when they get there, they just get stuck there. Jesus says, you're already clean because of the word I've spoken. The word Jesus was talking when he was washing their feet, he's saying, you're clean. I have washed you. I have made you clean. The word he had spoken to him in John 13. And then John 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by free. It's, it's in me, and you are in me, and you are clean. That's already taken care of. So it's not about salvation. It's about sanctification. It's about holiness and fruitfulness of life in following Jesus. Really, when it comes down to it, that's the main thing for this world now, this life. It's growing in Him. The holiness is that people see, you're different. You don't do what everybody else is doing. You're, you got something with you that's so different. What is that? You're kind, you're generous, you're, you're helpful, you're, you're doing stuff. See, that's the, how that holiness and fruitfulness comes out of our life now as we're, we're growing in Him. We're already saved, but now it's to grow in that knowledge of the Lord. It's to grow in our relationship to Him. It's to become mature in Him. It's what it's all about. And so he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. It's just going to happen. It's what happens when we stay connected. It will happen automatically because you see it's going to be his life flowing in us and through us. What do the branches do? They just receive the life that's flowing from the vine. It's his life flowing into us and then through us. So it's going to be automatic when you're connected. You're going to get me in you and through you for everyone else. When you're connected to me, when you stay connected to the vine. 
It's what he says. And he says this, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's a word, I think, for somebody here today. Sometimes maybe for me. If Jesus ain't in it, it ain't going to do nothing. So here's the question. What am I doing without Jesus, and why am I doing it? What's going to be the result of those things? Zero. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. That's a value. That's going to make a difference. That's, that's a part of the kingdom fruit. You can do stuff, but at the end of life, it's just going to be seen as a waste of time. Empty, unproductive. But when we're connected to the vine, everything starts flowing in and through us and has a kingdom value and there's fruit that comes because his life is in it and he's producing the fruit in us and through us for other people. I keep telling the story. I'm going to Kroger. I know I'm going to buy food but when I'm in the flow, when I'm in him, I know he's got people set up there for me to talk to, to ask, to, to lift him up, to bless in his name. There's something he's doing because he determines that I want Jesus in everything, so I just stay connected. Whatever you want, show me. I'm listening, I'm watching. That's how it works. But when he's not in it, it doesn't do anything. Then Jesus makes this point. If, if we don't abide, remain, stay connected, he says we will dry up and wither and be thrown out and burned. How many have ever done a brush pile? Okay. Doesn't that stuff burn? When it's dry. It's those sticks that have been laying in the ground for I don't know how long. They're no longer connected to its life-giving force. It gets dry, and it burns really fast. And it doesn't need to be hanging around in the yard doing nothing. Let's get rid of it. So that's what he says. Apart from me, you're going to become dry and empty inside. And he said, without me, there's nothing. He wants us to know that truth. You've got to understand he doesn't want that for anybody. He wants us to experience fullness of life. Yeah. He tells us about the bad stuff because he doesn't want us to go there. And he does that out of love. Again, it's like parents who tell their children, don't go there. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want bad things to happen to you. Come with me. Stay with us. There's good things here. So that's what he does. He doesn't want us. That's why he adds next, but I want you to know what's good. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Just remain. Stay connected. And then ask. And watch what happens. And my question is, why did he make that promise with that truth? I think it's because of this. Because abiding, remaining, and staying connected to Jesus changes everything because it changes us. We become different people. When he's living on the inside and flowing through us, it's, it's like a wow experience all the time. And when he's doing that, it's actually him inside of us who's doing the asking and then who's doing the doing. Did you guys get that? <laughs> he can say, ask whatever you wish, because it's going to be me and you asking for all the good things that I already want and I've put inside of you, and then I will do it, because it's me inside of you. And I'll even give you the joy as I do it in you and through you for other people. We're the pass-through. We're the jar of clay that he fills up. That's how this kingdom works. You know, it takes all the pressure off. I don't have to do. It's him flowing in me and through me. He changes me. It is him who 
wills and does according to his pleasure in us and through us. It's, it's what he does. He empowers. If, if he's not empowering it, there's nothing there. If it's me doing it in my own strength, guess what? It's called flesh. Flesh counts for nothing. Flesh brings destruction. That's why I talk about when manipulation, I, I want so bad for somebody to get it, and I start taking charge, and it ruins it. Yep. Have you guys noticed that I haven't come to your house and tried to force you to do all kinds of stuff? So here, here's the thing. It's, God has given to us church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip God's people for works of service. Make me look good. <laughs> but I don't come and force you to do anything because it's really an invitation. The gospel is an invitation. Come. Receive. Have. Experience fullness of life. I'm inviting you into the kingdom family with the kingdom blessings that you get to be about the Father's business with me as I work in you and through you. It's an invitation. But he didn't make robots, and so he doesn't force us. He gives us a will, a free will to say, whatever you wish. And then he does it. Just ask. He said, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. It's what pleases him. It's what showed the world who we are as the fruit comes. And then a little later in verse 16, he says, you did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Not as he wants us to be fruitful people and experience the joy, but he says what you do is going to last forever because what you do is kingdom stuff that blesses somebody else. They see your life or they're touched by your life and how you love them, help them, bless them, support them, encourage them, whatever it might be. So that when the day Jesus comes and, and we're standing there, he says, stop the show. Let me tell you about this one. When I was hungry, they gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, they gave me something to drink. When I was naked, they clothed me. I was living in them and through them. They were a branch that bore fruit. Oh, by the way, here they are. They're going to come up in a minute. People are watching all the time. What's coming out of our life? And when we're connected to the vine, there's that joy, that peace, that love, that kindness, the goodness. What flows out of our heart are words that come from Him because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks and it's Him on the inside because He dwells in the hearts in faith and out He comes. I want you to understand how important remaining, staying connected to the vine really, really is. So what does it look like when people are staying connected to the vine? It looks like Acts chapter 4. Listen again to what it says. It says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. Can you wrap your head around that? Not only did everybody get along, they thought the same thing because they were all receiving the same thing from the one who was telling them everything because they were listening and following. They were one in heart and mind. Picture this, a church meeting. Every vote is unanimous because everyone is saying, let's go, let's do, let's give, let's, let's express it all. Come on, that's what we're here for. Nobody had a descending vote saying, no, I think we should do it my way. Because when you're connected to the vine, you say, let's do it every way we can and let's go. This is what's going on. Acts chapter 4, they're all connected, one in heart and in mind. They were sharing their possessions because they didn't think any of it was their own. That is truth. 
I can share the Father's possession because that's what he gave it to me for. See, this world, I brought nothing in, I take nothing out. I know I'll be accountable for every nickel and dime and everything in my life, but I just want to honor you because I'm connected. I get it. I get you. I'm hearing from you. I'm receiving this life and this power from you, Jesus. This is what I get to do. That's the way they were living. Having great power to testify about Jesus and his resurrection, man, it just flowed through them. The power to talk about, lift up Jesus. And God's grace was powerfully at work in them all. Talk about a church that was abiding, remaining, staying connected. And here's the deal. Not only were they all connected to Jesus, but they were all connected to each other. And they were all connected to the mission. That this is what my life is about. It's about you. It's about being yours. It's receiving from you. We live in an individualist culture. It's I do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. I don't know if you've noticed that. But in Scripture, it's all written in a collective community kind of thing. My identity has come from my community, my identity. My life is connected to my family, my community. We're in this together. We do things together because that's what life is really all about. We've lost that in our Western culture. But God has made us to be a body where each part is a part of the body. And when one part's missing, he says what? The whole body suffers. Everybody has a part to play. There's, there's an important part everybody brings to the body to be healthy and strong. That's the way he wants to work, where we're all connected to the divine and we're connected to each other in the witness we give to the world. Because that's how they'll know we're his disciples, by that fruit that comes from that connectedness. Like I said before, this is important. Bearing fruit, being connected. That's why Paul prays the way he does for the Christians in Colossae. I want to just listen again. He says, first I thank God for the way that you are bearing fruit, seen in your faith and your love for God's people and the hope that you live with for what's to come in heaven, your inheritance. He's thanking God for already the fruit that's there, but you know what? He, does, he says, but I'm going to pray for more. I'm going to pray that your life bears even more fruit than it already is. He says, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will in the wisdom and understanding the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God and being strengthened with all power. Where's that coming from? From the vine flowing in, through, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. That's where we live and move from as kingdom people receiving from Jesus. So how do you stay connected? That's what needs to be known. So I'm just going to throw out a few. One is pray without ceasing. Because that's what Paul says. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in every, all circumstances. He says there's something we can do. I always struggled with that. <sighs> I better write down a big list because I'm going to run out of things to pray about. But that's not what he wants us to pray about. He wants us to say, let's just have a conversation. So every day it's like, you know, he had to wake me up and tell me how to do this, but it's like, wow, what a great day you've made, Lord. I know you got something in store for me today. What are we going to do today? My life is yours. Wow, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my wife. She's amazing. I wish she was here today, but I'm glad you're blessing her in California. I got so many things to talk about, but that's staying connected. I'm not 
unaware of your presence, I'm always sensitive to who you are, how you're here, how you're working, because I got eyes to see and ears to hear. I'm listening, I'm watching, I'm waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Come take over my life. Abide. As I abide in you, come abide in me. So pray without ceasing. Another one is this. Meditate on the word. It's easy to do this. Oh, I read today's light. Let me check it off. That's done. I read, I read, I read three chapters this week. I'm marking it off. Meditate means I eat on it. I sit and I receive. I say, what are you saying to me about my life? Because your word was written for me. It wasn't written for them. They already lived it. They don't need it. You read it, wrote it down for me because you want to speak to me and you want to refine my faith. You want to prune. You want, you want to do things inside of me. And you're giving me life through your word because your word is a life-giving word. And I'm hungry for you. It's the bread of my life that I eat. It's the air that I breathe. It's you. It's a meditating on you. That's how you abide. Pray without ceasing. Meditate on the word. And worship him. When I praise him, he comes down to inhabit our praises. Eternity is not long enough for us to praise him for how he is worthy to be praised. Lord, I thank you. I got worship music going on all the time. If you stop into my office, I'm going to have to turn it off to talk to you. That's what I do. That's what I've, I want to stay in that spirit of just praise and thankfulness and to give glory to God because he is so worthy. I had to put on that other music so that we wouldn't rel- think that Karen's, well, where's Karen all the time? So, But when you worship, he comes so close. What comes from a heart that is filled with gratitude and that wants to acknowledge him. Another one is fellowship with his people. When you are hanging around with God's people, there's power and there's strength. You're connected together. The early church met every day in the temple courts. They ate together in homes with glad and sincere hearts. Why? Because they were connected they, they knew the secret of, I want to be connected to Jesus, and he's in you, and he's in me, and we're connected, and there's more that comes when I stay connected, and I receive in all these different ways that the connection comes. Get connected with the body, with the people. We used to tell, we told someone once, he was always kind of discouraged, I said, just come hang out. We are having so much fun all week long in the office with Christy Allen. She's laughing all the time and we're joining and dancing and it's all life is because we're in the presence. We're not leaving the presence. We're not plugging in and plugging out. That's what so happens. But we're staying in a place where we're connected to the vine. And finally, the, probably the best one is this. Do nothing without him. Do everything with him. You know, that that, that vine will take you all kinds of wonderful places. See, when, when I'm not with him, I'm off on my own somewhere I really don't need to be. But when I'm plugged in, when I'm doing everything with you, everything becomes blessed. Everything becomes good because I'm with you where you want me, doing what you have for me, and you already set up this abundant, rich life in you. So when it comes to moving forward, moving forward, it's important to stay connected where all the power, all the life comes from, and that's Jesus. So our take home is simply this. As I focus on staying connected to Jesus, I can bear fruit in every good work. That's what Paul prayed for. See, he's already planned it. He sets us up, and he will do it in and through us. I'm just in the flow. 
Wherever you want to take me is fine with me. It's a setup. He determines the exact times and places. He already prepared in advance every good work that he has for us to do. And when I'm connected, he gives me life. He opens my eyes. He gives me ears to hear. He shows me. He gives me an urge. He gives me that nudge. That's what Pastor Anthony was talking about. He'll give you a nudge. He said, that one right there. See that frown? I want you to put a smile on that face. And I'm going to do it through you. And you get to have the joy of watching that frown turn to a smile. Now first ask them how they're doing. And then invite me in. That's it. (laughs) Okay. Hello, how are you? Are you having a bad day? What's going on? Wow, I'm really sorry. How about we invite Jesus into that? Oh, you want that? All right, let's do that. And by the end, the smile is there. They got a connection. They started to receive power from the life-giving presence of Jesus flowing in you and through you for them. And then he says, isn't it fun doing the Father's business? (laughs) Just wait. I got so much more. Secondly, as I focus on staying connected to Jesus, I can bear fruit in the knowledge of his will. See, he wants us to know his will. What does he want? And we can know it. That's what Paul was praying for, for them to know the knowledge of his will. You can know what he wants, and this is what he'll do. He'll show you what to do, where to do it, and how to do it. When I don't try to take the job from him and say, I got it all by myself. But if I just ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to do it? You want me to say it really mean? Just tell them. Do you want to go through the back door and love them in a gentle way? I always got to ask him because I don't know ahead of time what he's going to say. I can't presume to know everything. I know how he often works the ways that he works, but He may want me to be a John the Baptist and call a few people brood of vipers. I don't know. But he might want me to have a conversation and offer living water for people to drink. So when I'm connected, I can know his will. Thirdly, as I focus on staying connected to Jesus, I can bear fruit in great endurance and patience. Meaning, as I'm connected to him, he'll empower me to press through the tough times to finish well. That I don't give up, that I don't get off track, that I don't get discouraged along the way. I see, when I'm connected, he keeps filling me up. He says, you can do this. I will give you strength. I will give you power to press on, to press through. All that the enemy is trying to do to stop you, and you will finish well. So that at the end, we all have a party. The master is so happy as we celebrate what he's done and even what he's done in and through you for his glory because it's been pleasing him that fruit that has come through you. So Lord Jesus, we want to abide, remain, stay connected, bear fruit, fruit that lasts, to be pruned even more so that our life really does, is full in the best way through you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Staying connected, abiding in Christ. You know, in our house, we have, we used to have these lemons and sitting in this little basket. And then you come in the house and you see these lemons and they look so real. I mean, they look really real. If you walked in, you will want a lemon. But they was fake. 
fake fruit. And as pastor was preaching, I was thinking about that fruit. And if you see a lemon tree and a branch with lemons on it, they look just like the ones that was in my house. They look pretty, tasty, right? But if that branch is cut off, one of the branches is cut off and they got lemons on it, over a period of time, it's going to look different than the other lemons. And that's the same way with us when we're disconnected. You see, when you're disconnected from the branch, what happens with the fruit, if it's not connected, it begins to eat itself. But when it's connected to the branch, it's for other people to eat of. And it could keep producing that fruit because it's connected. As long as we're connected to Christ, we will be we will not be egocentric to where it's all about us. That's what Pastor was talking about, being alone. Being that fruit that's alone, it's egocentric. It's always about us. Personally, single person, just personally. It's me. It's me going through. It's me. Woe is me. But when we connect it to the vine, where we're getting all our nutrients from and all everything we need to stay healthy, it's no longer egocentric. It's Christ-centric. To where it's all about giving out to other people. Where we're all in this together. No man is an island by himself. If he decides to be, destruction is where he's headed. So God give us this great opportunity to stay connected to him. That whatever we need, whatever we stand in need of, it's in him. We cannot find it outside of Christ. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. I've been disconnected from the branch. It's a lonely place. Lonely, lonely place. And when you're disconnected, the enemy has a field day with you. For one thing, he plays with your mind. Everybody's talking about you. Everybody's this. Da, 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 da. That's when you by yourself. But when you connect it to the vine, you got Christ there with you. It's going to comfort you. It's going to be there with you. And then you have the body of Christ. People that's praying for you. People that's rooting for you. People that's cheering for you. People that's lifting you up and not tearing you down. Because iron sharpens iron. Abiding in Christ as the body of Christ. Where there is unity, there is strength. Amen. Let us stand, let us pray for the church. We thank you for the word, Pastor John, to abide in Christ. Without Christ, there is no hope. But with Christ, there's everything. So let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank you, Father, for this word that came forth on today, Father. You said in your word that we abide in you, you will abide in us. And so, Father... Help us to abide in you. For we know that no good thing dwells in this flesh, Father. So help us to crucify it every day. That when we wake up in the morning, Father, that we have you on our mind. When we go on throughout the day, Father, that we have you on our mind. And when I lay our heads down at night, we have you on our minds. That our minds just be kingdom filled about kingdom business going out into the highways and hedges and being that example that ambassador that you have called us to be that when people see us that they will want what we have and that's you Christ Jesus help us to abide in you and our thoughts our actions 
in everything we do. Help us to be more like you. We thank you for First Lutheran Church. We thank you for every church that's preaching Christ Jesus and him crucified. That we remain steadfast in what we do, Lord Jesus. Now we pray for our state, the natural state. We pray for all officials, Father. Give them the wisdom, the knowledge to guide your people. That they stay connected to you, Lord. And if they don't know you, that they may get to know you and the pardon of their sins. So we lift up all our officials to you, Father. You said in your words to pray for those that have authority over you. So we lift them up to you. Protect them from the evil one. Regulate their minds and their thoughts, Father, to be Christ-like. Now, Father, we pray for those that are sick, those that are hurting, that need your healing touch. Continue, please, Lord, to dispatch your angels to comfort. But most importantly, that your will be done. We pray for those having birthdays and anniversaries. Continue to bless them in their very best way, Lord. That even in the joyful times, they continue to abide in you as we move forward. So we thank you and we bless you, Lord Jesus. And we close out with the prayer that you have taught us to pray. That prayer is, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 We're going to say goodbye to those watching online. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I pray that today's word spoke to you. Powerful ways, a lot of different ways that he's speaking, drawing us near, helping us to press in and remain in him and the life and blessing that comes from that. If we can be a blessing to you on this journey, to stay connected, give us a call. Our number is 501 525 or join us live on Facebook. We're live every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11 at First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. Be a part of the family that way. Check out what's going on. So God bless you. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. See you then.